what are the best settings for this monitor? And by best settings, I mean the ones that I like to use according to my own preferences and which work on my unit according to the colorimeter targets which I use in the review. So I target a 6,500K white point, an ideally good tracking of the 2.2 gamma curve. So the first thing to mention, this monitor as an OLED monitor, it does have an ABL, automatic brightness limiter function, and it's quite complex on this monitor how the ABL works. It does depend on the preset you're using and it depends on the contrast level you've set as well. So if you want to minimize the ABL and you're just using the monitor under SDR, you want to stick to Gamer 1. This gives you an option in general called Smart Energy Saving and you want to have that set to off. If you select low or high, the monitor's brightness will sometimes dip so the ABL will kick in quite aggressively for certain content the other thing to be aware of is contrast, as I mentioned, that affects the ABL. Setting the contrast on this monitor is a little bit confusing. It seems that some of the presets it's set to 60 by default, others 70, and I know some reviewers recommend setting this to 70. That does have consequences for the ABL behavior. So with most monitors, there's a quite a narrow range of contrast you'd set the monitor to, which would be optimal, and it would be clear when you're outside of that range because you'll start blending brighter shades together too readily if you increase it too much and you'll start dulling the image significantly if you decrease it too much and it can also have other implications like blending dark shades together too much. With this model you can set it between 60 and 70 that's really your optimal band but if you increase this it does appear to brighten the image up but it does depend on the content being displayed. What it's actually doing is it's increasing your peak brightness output but it's also making the ABL more aggressive and this is very complicated. It does depend on the preset you're using. So this is how it applies with Gamer 1. And if you're using the sRGB setting, which I'll come on to shortly, it's fairly similar, a bit more aggressive in general, but the same kind of contrast setting applies. I would recommend 60 rather than 70, but you know, have a play, see what you like to use. And I do explore this in the contrast and brightness section of the written review. It is very complicated. It would be difficult to go through here how this all works, how this all links together. So do check that out. And speaking of brightness, again, the brightness does depend on the contrast setting you're using and that can change in different presets. I like to use a setting of 95, but this is based on the other settings, which I'll go through as well because they affect the brightness output. And 95 on my unit gives me around 160 nits. And that's what I like to target for my test settings, just to keep things consistent with my other reviews. But you set the brightness according to your own preferences and lighting conditions. So yes, you may realize from that setting of 95, 160 nits. And again, it does vary a bit because of the ABL. So yeah, it's not a particularly bright monitor, as I mentioned in the review. So yes, for some people it's not going to be bright enough, even if you set this to 100, but for others it's going to be just fine. You can, of course, adjust things like sharpness according to your taste. So if you want to increase this, it will over sharpen the image. But if you're running a non-native resolution, this might be something you like to do. You might find it looks more natural, actually, with a bit of an increase to sharpness, or you can make things less sharp if you prefer, all according to your own preferences here. The other thing I changed was color temperature, set that to custom, and then I changed the red, green, and blue color channels. This is what achieved a 6,500K or close to white point on my unit. And there is a bit of inter-unit variation. So if you copy these settings, they may not necessarily be optimal for your unit. The other setting of interest here is if you set manual W8, that means warm eight, that's the warmest setting you can set on the monitor without just manually adjusting the color channels. And this is a useful low blue light LBL setting. It gives a much warmer look to the image. It gives a slight green tint, but that is something which my eyes adjusted to pretty readily, I found, because it's not a strong green tint. So I quite like using this for relaxing viewing in the evenings or other times where my eyes felt a bit fatigued and I wasn't specifically testing the monitor as it does upset the color balance. The alternative is to use reader mode and I've just pressed the dedicated reader mode button so it's very easy to activate this but if you press the button again it doesn't deactivate it, it just stay, stays on reader mode which is a bit of a quirky implementation really and this isn't something which most people are actually going to want to use because it is a low blue light setting and it does that it reduces the blue light output effectively although no more effectively than the W8 setting I showed you before but the other thing is that it greatly reduces the contrast and 
it reduces that so it's below 100 to 1. This is intentional and it is designed so that your eyes spend less time accommodating to changing light levels from the monitor. And some people might find that more comfortable. I personally don't find this influences my viewing comfort and actually I just hate the contrast being this low so I, I don't like to use this mode but feel free to have a go with it see how you like it but it isn't something which you'll want to use a lot on this monitor contrast is of course a key strength of the OLED and you are destroying that by using this mode so as I mentioned the other presets they will change the ABL behavior a bit Gamer 2 uses pretty aggressive ABL it gives you a bright saturated image by default you can change things like the colour temperature, manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels, that kind of thing. Of course the brightness as well. But if you go to general, you'll see that smart energy saving is greyed out. That doesn't mean it responds in the same way as if that's set to high or low, but it doesn't respond in the same way as if that's set to off in Gamer 1. The ABL doesn't respond in the same way. So I would just recommend generally sticking to Gamer 1 if you prefer the lower ABL behavior, less aggressive, less noticeable, less annoying. But Gamer 2 is there if you want another preset and you want to set things up a bit differently. FPS, this makes a few changes. It grays quite a few things out, as you can see. It locks off quite a few settings. It does change the gamma and it also sets the black stabilizer to 70. This is designed to give a competitive edge so it can make dark shades more visible. I will explore the black stabilizer shortly because it was something I made slight adjustments to for my test settings as well. So I do consider this a best setting to slightly adjust this. There's RTS, which just makes other adjustments vivid. That is, yeah, vivid. It oversaturates things. It crushes things together. You lose shade variety by using this. And again, a lot of your controls are grayed out. Reader, which I've been through. HDR effect. This isn't HDR at all. The monitor is not being fed an HDR signal, and this doesn't look like HDR. It just gives a quite contrasty high gamma look to things with extra saturation as well. And again, it grays off a lot of your controls. If you prefer to have things more toned down and you want the monitor to adhere to the sRGB color space rather than using its native gamut, which is closer to DCI-P3, I explore the implications of this in the review, by the way. So you want to use sRGB emulation, clamp the color gamut, in other words, closer to sRGB, then you would want to be using sRGB rather than Gamer 1. Be aware, as I mentioned, that that will make the ABL automatic brightness limiter a bit more aggressive, although it isn't super aggressive. And when you're using sRGB, you can't change the black stabilizer and you can't adjust sharpness, gamma or color temperature. Although you can adjust the red, green and blue color channels, which is a nice little flexibility. And of course, you can adjust the brightness, which is a very nice flexibility. There's color weakness. And that's designed if you have colour blindness or colour weakness, it could make shades easier for you to distinguish. Of course, there are different types of colour blindness or colour weakness, and you can't configure it as you can on BenQ monitors and perhaps some others. So it's just on or off this particular setting. Calibration 1 and Calibration 2, you'll see it says a little bit about the calibration that's been performed. And this is a hardware calibration when you're using LG Calibration Studio. And that's explored in a separate video. So back to my preferred Gamer 1, I've shown you the brightness, the colour channel adjustments I made, the smart energy saving. If you connect it via HDMI 2.1, it might be called VRR rather than Adaptive Sync. So if I connect to my NVIDIA GPU with HDMI 2.1, this is called VRR for example, it's again controlling VRR. I'll just give you a little bit of an explanation of what it's doing. So Adaptive Sync, you want that on if you want to be using G-Sync compatible or AMD FreeSync, or you want to be using VRR, which uses Adaptive Sync, whatever it might be. But you can also use VRR on this monitor via HDMI 2.1 by selecting VRR and having that on. So that would work on the PS5, which doesn't support Adaptive Sync. It also lets you use NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode via HDMI. The screen's just gone blank, by the way. That's just a power saving thing on Windows because I hadn't moved the mouse for a while. That's all that was. So don't worry, the monitor is not broken. Another setting of interest, which I noted just before is black stabilizer. You'll see I'll set this to 55. It's set to 50 by default in Gamer 1. That's the neutral point. This monitor does give a little bit of black crush. It's not too bad. It's certainly not like most VA models, but it just masks a little bit of detail when this is set to 50. And if it's set to 55, it gives a little bit of an uplift to that top row on Legom. That's legom.nl, the website, and the black levels tests there. This won't be shown in the video as it would appear by eye, by the way. 
But on my unit, 55 worked well. It gives a little bit of an uplift, but you can receive a further uplift if you increase this further. On my unit, however, increasing it to 60 very slightly raises the black point. That is dark grey at the top there, not black, by the way. That is black. You won't be able to see this in the video necessarily, and the camera will be adjusting as well. But to my eye, I can see a very slight change. It's not a change you might notice when you're just using the monitor normally, but it's just something which I notice, and it may not be the case on all units. If you raise this further than 60, then it becomes more noticeable, the raised black depth, and especially if you're raising it close to 100 or up to 100. But yes, the visibility improves massively there. So for a competitive edge, you might want to increase this, but in terms of things looking good, I would generally recommend maybe just raising it a little bit. Now, my unit has an odd issue, and I don't know if this applies to other units. So if you observe this dark grey shade here, I've got the black stabiliser at 55 at the moment. If I increase this to 60, then a strange artefact appears. You can see that kind of cloud, and it kind of it moves as well. It's really strange. I don't know what exactly is going on there. If I increase this further to 65, then the cloud sort of fills up more of the screen. And if you're viewing a slightly different shade, it's not just this exact shade, it's a, it's a sort of range of shades which are close to this value will do it as well. But slightly different shades depending on the setting you've set. I don't notice this at all for any shades when I have it set to 50, which is the default, or 55, but at 60 and above, I do get this weird sort of clouding behavior. And it's not just on Legom. I actually did notice this when I was looking at movie content, certain dark movie content, I could see this from time to time. It may not be on all units, you might not notice it when using the monitor normally. So feel free to play with different black stabilizer settings, but I preferred to use 55, which was free from this artifact. I'm just gonna give you another example, a larger section of that shade. So this shade has an RGB value of eight per channel. So eight, eight, eight. And as I mentioned, it's not just this specific shade, but it's a grey level that's quite close to this. So for 55, no issues. 60, you might be able to see this strange, sort of looks like a mountain at the bottom there, which came and then went. And this opened up Legom when it's starting doing this crawling. You might not be able to see it on the video. Then I go back to this shade, did it at the top. You might be able to see this sort of inky look at the top slowly disappearing. So yeah, for actual content I did observe this and I found it a bit odd to be honest. It kind of just looked like strange compression artifacts which you often get for streamed content anyway but it was actually from the monitor and when it was paused I could see it moving from time to time. So yeah, 55 is my recommendation here but do feel free to have a play with this yourself. So that concludes the best settings for SDR. What about HDR? I'm just going to enable this. The monitor then automatically goes into its HDR operating mode. You see it says HDR on the top right there. And when you go into the menu system, you'll see that some of the options are grayed out. You can adjust the brightness, but this will mess up your PQ curve, meaning that really things are tuned with brightness set to 100. If you decrease this, then things start to look washed out in a way that they really shouldn't. It's not the same as the kind of brightness control you have under SDR. Things are really mapped for brightness to be set to 100. But if you're finding it uncomfortable, then you can reduce this. So it is a flexibility you have. Sharpness, I would just leave that at the default of 50, or I believe 50 is the default anyway. It is on Gamer 1 or should be. If it's not, well, I'd recommend setting this to 50. And you can use different presets under HDR, but Gamer 1 is by far the best. Gamer 2 will give you a high brightness level, but it also greatly oversaturates things. It really messes the image up in that respect, and it really just has upset balance. So Gamer 1 is really how HDR should look on this monitor. Gamer 2 is more punchy, extra brightness. And the same can be said for other settings, Vivid, for example, you might get slightly higher brightness, but it messes the image up in various different ways. Vivid looks extremely oversaturated with massively crushed shade variety. There aren't any calibrated presets, so you can't calibrate the HDR with hardware calibration or anything like that. And the reader setting isn't applicable to HDR either. So yep, really what you want to do, stick to Gamer 1 and I would just leave everything at the default, or as I've shown you, brightness 100, sharpness 50. 
Adaptive Sync can be enabled. You can use Adaptive Sync or VRR if you're using a system with HDMI 2.1 VRR. That can all be used at the same time as HDR. Black Stabilizer isn't applicable and neither smart energy saving. So that, that's all grayed out when you're using HDR. Oh, just a final setting. This is applicable to HDR and SDR. Is Buzzer. If you notice a little beep when you're turning them on to on or off, maybe it happens at other times as well, but I think it's mainly if it's being switched on or off and you don't want that to happen, switch the buzzer off.